Bevy, Rochelle didn't do a great deal. Is he in any doubt? What's wrong with him? Oh, look, no, today you would have seen, I think it was in the last drill or so, it was Josh Rochelle and Jake Saligo. We just, we managed them this week. Um, nine rounds in, they haven't played a lot of footy the last couple of years with COVID interruptions as underages. So part of the plan today was to, to manage them. So at this stage, it was managed through training. Maybe at some stage throughout the year, it might be um, game management, but uh, at the moment, it was just a, a load management for, for both those guys because they've played a lot of footy. So they'll play this weekend? Yeah, they'll be right to go. Yeah, um, obviously, uh Match committees the sub, is it? But you somehow have the teams divided into ones and twos. Yeah, well, we have. Oh, well, we have preliminary conversations this week, and then we we have different looks at training today, and then we go back this afternoon, assess where everyone's at, how they've pulled up. Sometimes it involves waiting till tomorrow, and then we finalise. So we have to have constant discussions, and we head straight for me to go and have further discussion on it. And Filthy looks like he's in for Himmelberg. Yeah, he was one we trialled in the. You would have seen him in the the blue team today um, and he's one we're keen to look at so again he's we've said he's he's been uh, with a bit of lack of continuity with training through his health and safety protocols and and whatnot so we'll see how he pulls up from training today but it was good to have a look at him out there today what have you seen about him that gives you confidence he's ready to come back oh i've seen his ability uh around the footy um, from a ruck perspective and also his ability to, to launch at the ball and, and cover the ground and he's feeling fresh so that's um, I guess a, a good byproduct of him having a couple of lighter weeks albeit forced for him. How does he have to manage that and are you going forward heavily strapped today and even after one of the drills he's going over to you know, have a couple of Yeah weeks. again I'm, I, I don't know exactly how he manages it but it's it'd be a well managed by the, the medical staff in terms of loads in terms of rehab maintenance etc but um, they'll be all over it. Yeah, he uh, he again got through training today, and he's an important part of our mix. So, provided that he pulls up well, he did some contact work today, um, which is important. So, make sure he he gets through okay and pulls up, and then he'll definitely be in the conversations that we have this afternoon later in the week. How is he actually going? Because it's been a few times now with obviously something pretty significant that happened yeah. in the off season, and three different times this year has had a moment. Yep. So yeah, it's a it's a bit of a balancing act for him, and again, I don't know exactly how he's how he's feeling with it. But the decision was made last week that he needed to to give it some more recovery, and he's put himself out there today, trained well, trained with in the combat situations that we had. So, provided he pulls up well, um, and again, I don't know what the next few weeks look like for him, but um, he's got an individual plan with the the medicos that that they'll work through and. Um, yeah, he'll hopefully pull up well this week and put himself up for selection. How do you manage the Jordan Butts? Uh, does he come out on the day? Of the yeah, so he's he's out on Saturday, I believe. So that's a difficult one to manage. Jordan's one that's in our so he's in our best 22. Um, so we'll have to get some eyes on him uh, as early as we can, um, see where he's at, and then we'll make a make a call from there with Buttsy. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one with the timing of it all, but um, yeah, it might mean a, a later call in the week for, for where Butts is at. How yeah. much is there pretty big taller Saints as well? Was yeah. that sort of increase your maybe thinking to, to get him back in there? Yeah, it's definitely part of the discussions. Um, and then could argue as well, last week they were pretty tall up forward and we went slightly smaller ahead of the, uh, behind the ball. So again, conversations we'll have and we'll have to have contingencies around whether Butsy's good to go, whether we make the decision that he's not to go, whether he says he's not good to go, because it's not just not having a week of footy, he's also, you know, um, hasn't been hasn't been well to a certain degree, and guys pull up differently and respond differently to, to um, I guess, different COVID situations. How's he actually feeling at the moment? Uh, I haven't spoken to him directly, but I believe he's feeling good. Is that like a on Saturday morning or something? How do you ascertain where he's at? Yeah, again, I don't know exactly what the plan is for him on Saturday yet, um, but it would be, yeah, getting eyes on him and then assessing yeah, what the decision is from there, whether it's push him, go with it. Does his position assist him, like coming back, the fact that he's not playing in the midfield and running 16 k's a game? Uh, it's gone on those days anyway. Yeah, I think it's gone on those days. We'll make an individual assessment on him personally, where he's at, his injury history, etc. And um, yeah, they'll make a well rounded decision based on, on where he's at. Just it's, it's unfortunate it's going to be day of the game, so it's going to mean a last minute look over him. But um, there's been constant dialogue every day since he's been in isolation about how he's feeling, etc, etc. So um, we'll, we'll let you know more later in the week when we, when we can. Yeah, he had a good run there for a few weeks and uh, 
uh, obviously probably hasn't been at his best the last few weeks. If it is Riley for Elliot this week, how does um, how does Elliot go back and I guess manage him? Yeah, I guess I'll just talk holistically around um, probably our, our key forwards and, and part of the role that we expect of, of key forwards is their ability to, to comply and help the team in team defence. Offensively, it's about their ability to, to provide options, hit the scoreboard, jump at the ball. Um, that's no different whether it's Tex, whether it's Fogg, whether it's Elliot, Riley. Um, the list goes on for guys we've got ahead of the ball. So the role doesn't change for them and the focus areas for those guys, well, they might slightly differ individually. Um, the role expectations are, are very similar around their ability to, to provide a consistent target ahead of the ball and and we go from there. How have you seen his form? Yeah, again, he he's one that would be wanting at times more out of his game um, and he's not alone in terms of where we've been the last three weeks um, because we've had some disappointing results but felt like the weekend just gone. The first half obviously was back at the level that we expect and we put ourselves right in the game against uh, one of the best sides in the competition. So a step in the right direction for us, albeit second half wasn't where we wanted it. What gets said to Crouchy in the work? Again, it's similar conversations around role expectations and how we get them back to their best. Um, so again, for, for Matty, he's got individual focus areas, which I, I won't give specifics on. Um, Junior is the same in terms of we or having them at their best, they at a significant amount to our group as senior players and with the attributes that they've got. So it's about how we sooner rather than later get the best out of them and then we get them back into the side when they're at that level. Given how the team's going, is there a temptation to bring them in on? But you've got a couple of first choice players, even with Rob, yep. you know, outside of the team. Is there the temptation to just get your main cattle back in the side? Or yeah, ab yep, absolutely. There's conversations we have around that. Um, and there's conversations around rewarding form at SNFL level because we're, we're fortunate at the moment the SNFL team's been really strong and playing good footy, so there's good form underneath. So there's a balancing act between both yeah, experience at AFL level, rewarding form beneath, um, and it goes from there. So that's part of where the decisions have been made, but those conversations have definitely been had. So how do you juggle the toss-up between, so it's very respectfully, yeah. a first-choice player who's maybe not in his best form and a player who may not be as good in the first 22 but having a good couple of weeks when clearly your number one guy will be your number one guy? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question it's, and it's a bit of horses for courses and sometimes it's, yeah, we, we always will back in players that have runs on the board to a certain degree and, and challenge them to get them back at the level and then there's times where we go a circuit breaker or a reset or a bit of recovery might be better to, to get you back at the level um, and then there's also part of with a young developing group is that uh, yeah, I thought we got the, away from the yeah I thought we were going to um, so yeah there we go um, I don't know where I was going with that now I've been the balance between your main guys. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is a balancing act. And with the younger guys in particular, it's it's around you want to have a carrot there for them that if they do perform and it's performed for a consistent period of time, A, it gives them confidence in their role, their ability, and probably what we've seen over the last couple of years, if, if it's a prolonged period of form, they're more likely to come in and, and play at the level for longer versus if it's just one or two weeks and they come in, then it's it's harder for them to adapt at the level. So that's probably part of the reason why even uh, Jacko Hatley, for example, he smashed it out of the park early early games and was putting forward performance after performance, five or six weeks, that's NFL level, until he gets his opportunity. And um, on the weekend, you see he plays his best game of footy for the, uh, for the footy club, which is pleasing for him. But I think it's off the back of him having a, a solid block of footy. What did you make of Strong's game? Yeah, he's one that's had an outstanding block of footy and form at SNFL level. Um, and he had a really tough ask on the weekend with McInerney and Fort, two genuine ruckmen. Um, had his moments where he competed really strongly um, and around the ground was, was solid. And, and moments where he got exposed um, because you know, McInerney's a seasoned campaigner and, and Fort's no uh, easy beat himself. So um, had his moments he'll definitely learn from, but definitely some... You can see growth in his game from last year and the year prior when he's had opportunities. Did the lack of sample game, or does the lack of sample game make it harder to make too many changes this week? Oh, it doesn't change our decision making to a, to a degree. Obviously a game does help in terms of continuity for guys. Um, 
And sometimes if they've had a super strong performance on the weekend just gone if we played, it elevates them to a different level of discussion. But we always refer back to their most recent form and we don't discount the fact that they haven't had a game on the weekend for reasons why they won't be selected, if that makes sense. I was going to say, so Junior's, Junior was sort of a, a build-up fitness again. He's missed two years of footy, so the expectation on him won't be enormous. But now that he has had sort of a couple of months of EBA, there's still areas where you're not confident in bringing him in. There's, there's something he's not doing right. It's, it's bits of his role and understanding oh, where well, the role we want him to play at AFL and where we're going to get the best out of, of Junior. I mean, traditionally in the past, Wayne's played all over the place for us, which... Um, some might say that's a few strings to his bow, which you want as an AFL player. Sometimes it's really hard to come in and play like Dorse did last week, play on ball, play behind the ball, play forward. Some players love it and some players, I know I didn't necessarily like as a player um, and it's a challenge. So we're trying to find the best position that he helps us at AFL level um, and we are keen to get him in as soon as we possibly can. We feel that he's ready to come in and play the role for us because he does like you said, with Matty Crouch, with Riley O'Brien, they make us better when they're at their best. Is that a defensive role primarily for him? It has been early in the season, and we've had discussions around potentially other roles as well, because we know he can play really anywhere, um, and it's about opportunities at AFL level, how we get him in there sooner rather than later. And that doesn't guarantee this week, doesn't guarantee next week, but it's it's an open-ended question um, answer for you, but sooner rather than later. Has it taken longer than you the club and he expected because after he get a job, yeah. after round one, it seemed like it was going to be a few weeks, not round ten, and playing still in the twos. Yeah, look at our conversations the early days. We didn't put a number on it and say it was going to be two, three weeks. It was when we feel that that opportunity is ready for Wayne and when he's ready. So, um, again, it might feel like an extended period of time, and it, and it has been for Wayne. But we'll make the decision when he's ready to come back in. Uh, again, hopefully sooner rather than later, if that as makes a, sense. As a midfield coach, are you, would you slot him into the centre? I mean, he has a difference. Yeah, he does. He um, he he gives us some some polish around the ball. So the more that we can get the ball in guys like his hands, Jordan Dawson, um, on the outside, they certainly do help add polish to our game. So that's that's why we consider him an important part. How do you balance? Last one, but... Yeah, come on. Well, how do you balance a player who's very good going forward or from an attacking point of view and helps you in that connection space that, uh, that you're lacking in yep. versus defensive deficiencies? Does it get to a point where you play a, a, a player who's better going forward at the expense of defensive deficiencies? Uh, yeah, I think your que is your question around where we play someone like a Jordan Dawson, or is it more someone that's got defensive deficiencies in their game? So, but like, who's asking you the question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but say, say we're talking about Junior. Yeah. And if the and if the shortcoming is defensively, when do you go? Well, we're, we're lacking so much in the connection space that we're actually going to forego the defensive difference. Oh, we weigh that up with with everyone. Like, no one's a perfect player in terms of a well-rounded game. Um, and even the best players in the comp, um, I dare say most of them would be deficient in some areas. Um, and yeah, we weigh that up in terms of balancing out the team. You can't have all one area of the ground deficient in one area or other, so we just weigh it up as a match committee. That's as simple as I can put it for you.